I want to tell you guys everything you need to know when looking for LED bulbs. There's over a thousand LED bulbs on the market today, and it's really easy to be scammed into something that looks intriguing but is not any good. Maybe it's something that might be bright, but it scatters the light. Maybe it's something that's bright for a little bit, but then fails in the future. Maybe it's something that doesn't actually fit in your vehicle at all. So I just want to give you guys some tips and tricks on what to look out for when you're purchasing LED bulbs. So let's get started. The first thing I want to talk about is the wiring. Everything else about an LED bulb is essentially irrelevant if it's got bad wiring. I don't care if you're on Amazon or eBay or some third party website, if it has something that is not waterproof like this, Opt 7, as you can see here, this connection right here is gonna be the failure point. So even if you had a really bright LED or a really good driver driving those LEDs or a fan that keeps it cool for a long time, the wiring right here is going to be your failure point. So you want something that has more of like a barrel connector. So when you connect it, it's definitely gonna be waterproof and you can screw it on to just have that reassurance that you are not gonna get any water intrusion inside of your wiring. I'm from Minnesota and when you get salt, debris, grime, dirt, mud into the wiring, it's gonna fail. And if you're gonna have a wiring like this, chances are it's also not gonna have a warranty. This isn't one of the top three things I would look out for, but I essentially look for bulbs that do have a warranty. That means that the company does stand behind the bulb that they had created. This connector right here on the OP7 bulb is really silly because you can disconnect this wiring, which is not waterproof, from the driver. This is the driver that drives these LEDs. This is just yet another failure point. You already have one connection back here, which plugs into your OEM wiring. Why would you want another connection here? Only for it to fail? I mean, come on, this is trash. And actually, I just spent $40 on this bulb to show you that, and I'm gonna break it entirely. Let me show you another wiring example that I tend to steer away from if I'm buying aftermarket LED bulbs. This right here doesn't have a driver. So remember before with the OP7, you could disconnect it from the driver. Well, this doesn't even have a driver, which is a very good indication that this is not going to be a very bright bulb. They're not going to use that driver to push these LEDs to their optimal to give you guys the brightest pattern out there or the brightest light output out there. So if the bulb doesn't have an LED driver, it's a good reason to just kind of throw it away and definitely not waste your money on it. I'm only making this video to try to save you guys money because when you're shopping online, even if you don't purchase from Headlight Revolution, there's so many options that you tend to get overwhelmed and just buy some garbage. And it's actually blinding oncoming drivers. That'll lead to the third most important point that I'm gonna get to at the very end. I would say it's the most important point, so stick around. Now, if you've already thrown your hands up and said, no, I don't wanna deal with this. There's just way too many things to think about when buying an LED, I'm not going to upgrade my halogen bulb. Don't panic because I have already tested most of these in individual vehicles. And if you go to headlightrevolution.com and you type in your year, make and model, you'll see all of the light output and all of the bulbs that we've actually tested and found to be good. If you don't see it on our website, it's because it wasn't any good. The second thing I would recommend looking out for is the way that these bulbs are cooled. If the bulb is not cooled, over time it's just going to fail, it's going to burn out. So the cooling of these LED bulbs are very important. There's a couple different ways that they cool LED bulbs. And just to make it simple, there's passive cooling, which doesn't have anything driving it, and then there is a fan. There's a few different braided heat sinks out there that I could recommend to you guys. But overall, a good generic rule of thumb is if you have a fan on the backside of your LED, it's generally a good thing because that is cooling the bulb properly and that means they can really crank the brightness up in those LED chips. If you have like a Polaris Razor or something like that, something that really does get muddy quick, yes, the dirt and grime could get in this fan and then fail and then over time that bulb, if it's not any good, could fail. If you are gonna put these in a Razor, yes, I still would recommend some of the ones on our website, but there's also ones like by Xenon Depot that has this fanable heatsink that's not so much a fan, that's not gonna spin, and that way if it does get nasty, dirty, it's actually not going to fail. They're not quite as bright because they don't have a fan to cool them, so they can't have the LEDs drive really hard, but they are still a really good option. So it's just something to note. If you want something extremely bright, it's generally gonna have a fan. And most times, if you have this in a headlight housing, you're gonna be able to use a dust cover on the backside of your headlight. That way you don't even have that issue of the fan just not working. Everything can be shoved in there. So you put this bulb into your original factory headlights, and then you can shove this driver if it's not a big driver. Another thing to look out for, you can shove the driver if it's not really big in the side, inside that housing, 
plug it in, and then you can put your dust cover on the back side. If you're scrolling on Amazon and you see something with really good wiring, but then it has this huge fan that probably won't even fit inside of your headlight housing without the dust cover over it, even though it had good wiring, the bulb is probably not any good. So save your money, just be cautious. Now don't go anywhere because the next parts that I'm going to talk about are the single-handedly most important part to look out for when you are purchasing an LED bulb. And that is the chipset. Where are the chips lying? This might seem like a typical review, but I need to tell it to you guys because it's extremely important. Your original bulb is a halogen bulb and it has a wire wound filament on the inside. And that wire wound filament is what glows, gets hot and glows. And your LED bulb is essentially trying to replicate that really small wire wound filament in the center of your headlight housing. So if your chips on the LED bulb don't look something like that, the bulb is gonna scatter the light and you are going to blind oncoming drivers. A lot of people think the more LEDs, the brighter it's going to be. Well, not really. If they use a bunch of crappy chips, but a whole bunch of them, it's not gonna produce more light. But what it is going to do is scatter the light all over. So let's review. This right here is a multi-sided bulb and you see the big humongous chipset. That is a no-go and we're going to throw this away indefinitely. If you have really big LED chips or it's a big bubble, just throw it away. Please don't waste your money on that and your blinding oncoming drivers. It's actually keeping you less safe than your original halogen bulb. So this is what your LED bulb should look like. You have these small chips right here on this side and it needs to be two-sided, one here and one here. That's about the best way you can replicate that wire wound filament as of now. There is no other technology out there that has surpassed this. That's why we still tell everybody about this. This is the Morimoto Two Stroke 3.0, but there's other bulbs on our website too that essentially look the same. How those chips are mounted on that PCB or that printed circuit board is really important as well. If this circuit board is really fat, and the LED is on the top and the bottom, well, that's not really close to the center where that original wire wound filament was, thus giving you a very bad beam pattern. If the bulb you're looking for online has a thumbs up in all three of those different departments, it might actually be a very good bulb. Before you click off to the next video though, if your vehicle is a 2010 and newer and it utilizes the low beam for a daytime running light, you generally need a PWM module or a pulse width modulation. This is going to keep it from flickering. It looks something like this. So it goes in line with your original wiring and then right here, this connects to your LED bulb and then you can just mount this somewhere inside the vehicle or inside the headlight. The last thing you want is a really expensive LED bulb and it just doesn't work in your vehicle. Another helpful tip, if you do have connections that are waterproof, but they do still disconnect and connect with barrel connectors, I definitely recommend putting some dielectric grease in there. We have some dielectric grease for really cheap on our website, headlightrevolution.com, and it's just another step to preserving the life of the wiring on your LED bulb. I see so many LED bulbs fail because of the wiring, and using just a dab of dielectric grease inside the connection before you screw it on is a really good idea. I could go really in depth on these LED bulbs. Just note, you also need to get the right connection size. If you have an H11 halogen bulb, you need to replace that halogen bulb with an H11 LED bulb. A lot of companies out there don't make every single size, so be cautious as to which one there is. Something like an H4, I don't see that made by every single manufacturer out there. If you have an H4, you're limited. And lastly, if you're on Amazon or on eBay and it says 16,553,455 freaking lux or lumens, that is bogus. I don't even know how the descriptions are allowed to be that long, but if something says like 15,000 lumens from a LED bulb, they are blatantly lying to you. And I can guarantee you, because I've tested it myself, that one of those LED bulbs are not 15,000 lumens. Let's be realistic here. These bulbs can be very bright. They can be really refined. You can adjust them to get the right beam pattern to put all of that light in the center where you need it, not scatter all around, and you can get some pretty impressive numbers. Lux, which is the actual usable brightness at a certain point, and lumens, which is essentially the entirety of the light. All of that can get pretty wild, but it's not gonna get no 17,000 lumens out of one LED bulb. 
Use common sense when you're buying LED bulbs so that you can keep yourself safer and other people around you safer. If you want to see other videos like this about LED bulbs or HID bulbs or aftermarket replacement housings, go to Headlight Revolution on YouTube or just go to our website and see what we have for your vehicle. Type in that year, make, and model and you'll see everything that we have tested for you.